Hello everyone, so I've seen this, which is I miss the old iDubs. And it's a video from, who would you think, iDubs, um, who's a very controversial person, or at least was, right? At least was. And I know a lot of my audience like don't know about iDubs, and like this this video is from what I'm seeing is an apology, and I think I just like for people who don't know about iDubs. I, I'm not really the best person to describe Chatter saying hello. Um, I'm not really the best person to describe iDubs because I never watched iDubs, nor was that content I really enjoyed. I did see him a lot on YouTube, but from my take, he was always a pretty controversial YouTuber that, you know, he had a, a series called Content Cop, which I am aware have now all been deleted. And they were these videos where he would like expose YouTubers and like drill into ones was with Tana Mojo. Here we're seeing a tweet from Tana Mojo. So after this tweet that she, you know, wrote to him, he went to one of her meet and greets and went up to her. And if you remember, he went to her meet and greet, put his arm around her and went say, and then if you know, you know, you know, you know. And it was basically this full thing where he was it was kind of like weaponizing like Tana saying the n-word and then went to her meet and greet and then was like say and was trying to get her to say it again or something like that um uh, if you know you know then Tana did this apology and all these different things and so the content cop on Tana Mojo and then she had to apologize and there's just so many different things so he he was known for this and he was known for this like edgy humor I guess is like the humor by the way I never enjoyed it but a lot of people on YouTube did um, I know a lot of people in my secondary school, I went to an all boys school, so clearly loved his content, used to watch his content. He kind of catered towards that like edgy meme lord, you know, not like the others, you know, like toxic humor. But, and I'd never heard of him really since, again, not really my pull of YouTube. Um, but I've been seeing him pop up here and there and apparently doing like boxing and stuff like that and i mean i see him on the h3 podcast all the time and i was always confused about it this has nothing to do with h3 i'm just saying that's where like i saw him again for the first time um and i was like oh my god like is he still you know doing all that content and then being promoted i was like what is going on um apparently he like completely rebranded himself and i mean him and his partner and i are you know very liked and stuff and i never really understood it because i kind of like visualize him as like that you know creator in the past that's the only real content i've watched of him um so whenever i saw this video which is i miss the old idubs and it's a pa oh, i didn't mean to like it i haven't watched it yet so um it's him addressing all that so we're gonna watch this again he's a very big creator almost 8 million subscribers has a really big fan base he says, I haven't spoken candidly about my feelings on this channel. It's been, you know, a video that I would want to make. I've changed and matured during my time here on YouTube, and I'm glad that I had. So basically, it's seemingly being an apology video, and we all love an apology video. People in my chat are asking what the comments are like. We love doing this. People are, I think everyone would agree, Keem deserved the content cop. Aside from how the videos were done, I do think the idea of content cop is good and shitty people deserve the consequences you gave them. Not being ironic, I'm being serious. Um, this is my favorite thing you've done. Imagine how strong you'd be, blah, 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 blah. I never would have thought the final content cop would be about himself. This is the best apology and very self-aware video. Um appreciate the video i'm going through a similar journey i completely respect how much you've grown as a person i have a lot of respect for this video i'm glad you acknowledge these videos have done a lasting damage and there's more you need to do i i feel less conflicted watching creator you know related stuff which is you know his boxing stuff so basically the comments seem to be pretty on his side so let's watch this video and we'll go from there we're also all filming this together. I don't know what time you're watching this on YouTube, so please comment down below. We are currently filming this at 4.24 in the morning. Um, so if there's a little bit of, you know, eyes closing, if there's a little bit of, if I fall asleep halfway through it, if I mess up on my words, um, we are filming this at nearly 5 a.m. So tell me what time it is for you down below. But let's get into this video. I'm very interested to hear what he has to say because, again, I, I know very little about him in today's age, but I know he's rebranded i guess so here let's go for a while i felt like if i changed my content over time that people would see that as a reflection of who i am and what i value uh, but 
I, I'm starting to realize that that is a very weak and passive way to, you know, run my channel and live my life. So I, I think it's, you know, if I'm going to have the balls to go to Tana's uh, fan meetup and say oh. slurs at her and then make a video about how it's okay to say slurs. I'm pretty sure as well he tweeted Tana today. Now, if you're aware, this was a huge thing on YouTube. I really should pull it up. Tana Mojo iDubs. This was a huge thing. iDubs visited <laughs> Tana Mojo. All right. So he went up to her, or so he went to her meet and greet, Tana Mojo, right? And they got in line, and he went up to her, and I'm gonna not play it, but he went up to her, and was like, so, okay, um, but, oh, so I'm pretty sure he tweeted her. Or she tweeted him. This was a huge thing on YouTube. Like, huge thing. Tana Mojo. Um, eagerly awaiting Tana's response to iDubs. Cancel podcast as soon as possible. Crazy times. Wondered if he'd ever come on. I have a lot to say. Definitely never thought this would happen. iDubs said I would. Tana said message you. So, interesting. Anyway, let's continue. I think I should have the balls to make an apology video and take accountability for the mistakes I've made. So, that's what this video is. I've realized that I need to be crystal clear about what I believe, so there's no room for ambiguity. I am responsible for creating a lot of hurtful and damaging content on this channel, and... There's something I love about watching an apology video because I think it's very easy to tell if someone's being genuine by their wording and the way they're acting. So this is 17 minutes in and we're a minute into it. So I think we're going to be able to gauge by the end of this if we think this is a very genuine thing or not. So this is like, I mean, pretty soon into like Shane's one, you were like, oh, he's bullshitting. So we'll see. I, I wonder how long it'll be before this where I make my mind up on this is genuine or this is just like, you know, trying to like move on or whatever sorry cyrus is just poking my leg literally just poking my leg so i guess he wants to say hello do you want to say it? he's purring so loud i love you baby all right i've also created a culture of uh apathy and i don't know a lot of like cruelty as well like okay you know some of the videos i've made have been very not edgy. I don't think they, they, you know, some of these videos were edgy. I think they were just outright cruel. So I don't want people to, you know, Good get point. it confused about, you know, where I stand. I have made some cruel, hurtful content, and I need to acknowledge that, and I'm really sorry that it's taken me this long to acknowledge it. The content I'm talking about specifically are content cop videos and videos where I was uh, just generally criticizing people for very lackluster reasons and, uh, you know, obviously didn't have any accountability online whatsoever on my end. I was morally grandstanding and acting as if I am any better than any of these people that I was making content cop videos on, and I'm not. I'm a human. I'm a real human who makes mistakes and you know i make a different set of mistakes than the people i was making videos on but it doesn't matter i don't think anyone deserves that there's a lot of people in my chat talking about his tone i feel like he genuinely just talks like this um what i will say is something that olivia said i think it's interesting that this isn't like a current scandal he's just you know he's the one to kind of start this like no one was really asking for this i mean people don't like the content that he's made people have a lot of problems with it he's kind of standing up and be it's kind of like the i will never never like comparing someone to to my mother jenna marbles but this is kind of giving where jenna marbles sat her ass down love her beyond fucking words by the way i've like started going through all her videos chronological order again and she was talking about the fact that you know she wanted to address this she wanted to apologize she wanted to let people know where she stood rather than people wanting her to 
I'm sure there, pe- there was people that wanted to, but I think this is a good example of that as well, where, you know, people moved on. People really don't talk about this anymore with his content. He seemingly has a completely new audience. I will give him credit already for the fact that, not for any of the content he's made or any apology, but the fact that he's doing this and bringing this up himself rather than someone pushing him to do it. Like, this is not a Shane Dawson, like, you're being forced into an apology. He's, you know, doing this out of his own accord. I don't know much about him. I'm aware of that fucking edgy meme lord content. I didn't like it. Never enjoyed it. But so far, we're off to a good start with this. I will say that. We're off to a good start. That level of cruelty or hate. It's also indoctrinated a lot of people into thinking that this is an okay way to behave. And it's not. Okay. It's, it's super irresponsible and shitty. I am very insecure about my ability to create interesting content or like entertain uh it's gotten better over the years but it's something that i have struggled with constantly and it's one of the reasons why i you know kept making this hurtful content you know i i ended up pivoting it into other things because i you know i felt bad about it like innately um, but it's still something that I struggle with, and I don't want you to interpret that as an excuse, but I hope that that is relatable to other creators who maybe struggle with the same thing. Uh, I'm not confident in my ability to entertain, and I think if I had to rely on my personality uh, to entertain people, that I-, I wouldn't I wouldn't have any amount of success, and that is... Uh, really hard to come to terms with. I was being very bigoted in a lot of my videos, True. and I justified it because you know I didn't think it was too serious, and I thought that people were going to see that I had good intentions, you know. But that's so silly, you know. Casual racism is still racism. Casual bigotry is still bigotry. True. And you know, I said a lot of things that uh, I, I look back at and I cringe now and I'm like, that is an awful thing to say. True. It, it doesn't matter what my intentions are. Like if I'm hurting people, I'm hurting people. I think that's a great point. I think that's a great point. I'm so glad that we have a creator who has, I think this is the first time we've ever seen a creator. No, I think Jenna said this. I think Jenna said this as well, which was like, I didn't mean for it to come across like this, but it did. So that's a problem. Like, we're so used to hearing people be like, oh my God, it was interpreted in this way. But like, I appreciate whenever someone will be like, I didn't mean for it to come across like this. I was, you know, casually making like really bad jokes, but it doesn't matter if I was casually making jokes. Those casual jokes were harmful. So, I always appreciate when people say that, and I'm pretty sure Jenna said something pretty similar to that, where it was like, I didn't mean for it to come across like this, but it doesn't matter what I meant, because it did. I think that's a very important point to bring up. And, you know, who the fuck knows what my intentions are? Like, I, sarcasm and, like, uh, jokiness and jokey tone only goes so far, especially over the internet. Even in real life, that's, like, an impossible thing to know with 100% certainty. I've just always had this dumb philosophy that I'm not responsible for, you know, my audience and uh, how they behave beyond what content I put out. And uh, that's stupid. It, and it's it's led to a lot of hate and a lot of bad outcomes. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just want to make it clear that I am absolutely responsible for my audience. And, uh, you know, I guess... If you want to, you know, look out for people. Wow, I feel like this is the first creator that has ever said that, like, they're responsible for their audience. I don't think we've ever had a creator say that, ever. I don't think I've ever heard a creator say that whenever they're apologizing for something. I don't think a creator has ever said that. I've heard creators say that, you know, they can control what their audience do. And creators are responsible for the community they build. And this is the first time I feel like I've ever heard a creator say that. People who are red flags, it's definitely people who had my mentality that say, uh, I'm not responsible for what my audience does. I know that this apology isn't enough. I've clearly done a lot of damage 
you know, these videos have been up for a long time and, and have accumulated millions of views. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't be able to just make an apology video and walk away from it. This is something that I should live the rest of my life with, and I expect to. Uh, I've profited off of this bigoted content for years, and I've made a successful career out of it. Okay, this is something that's so interesting to me because I hate to keep bringing it back to Shane, but like this is what this is what Shane should have done already. Like people say, like Shane never acknowledged that like he built his career off of problematic content or he built his money and off of problematic content. And Shane always never addressed that. Again, I feel like this is a creator that is being like, I literally built my livelihood off of this kind of content. Perfect. And that's not right. Uh, I think that this is only a step in the right direction. And I know that a lot more needs to be done to even approach um, a life that I would think would be like uh, acceptable. I am running ads on this video and uh, any revenue uh, generated from this video, I'm going to match and donate to an organization that you know, would have been particularly affected by the type of rhetoric that I've been spewing on this channel. Oof. And again, this isn't the end of what I'm doing. This is just the start. I don't feel like a lot of this content represents me as a person, uh, at least not anymore. There was a time where it probably perfectly represented me because I was a nasty, apathetic, insecure person. Now, now that I don't feel like it represents me and I want to distance myself from it, and keep it from, you know, indoctrinating more people. I'd like to unlist the videos so that people, you know, can access them still for whatever, you know, purposes they might want to do that for. Um, but it's not being proliferated on the website. Oh my god, this is such an interesting point. He's not deleting any of the content that he's talking about, but he's unlisting it. So no new viewers will discover that content. But if people so desperately want to see the content for whatever reason, whether it's referencing or whatever, look at this. He's literally talking about if you want to reference the content, I'm not going to delete it, but I'm going to unlist it. So no new people will see it. But if you so desperately want to see it, you can. I think that's such an interesting thing because we're so used to people doing apology videos after they've wiped their channel of billions of views. <clears throat> Trisha Paytas and Shane Dawson. Wow, that's an interesting point that I've never thought a YouTuber would talk about, which is I'm not going to delete the content. I'm going to unlist it so no new people see it. Yeah, I'm not hiding. So you can see it, what I'm talking about if you want, but no new people will discover it. He's not trying to delete history. He's saying it's there, but like no new people will find it. Like you have to go out of your way, clicking secret links and stuff. So the way the way with Shane, it's all like re-uploaded content on different channels. He's like, you can find it on my channel, but like you have to really go looking for it. I think it's interesting. I think we're off to a very, very, very good start with this video. Very good start. I, I feel I like think this that... is exactly like, people always say, like, especially, again, I'm gonna bring it back, after Shane's video, Shane's fans were like, what did the cancel culture want? Like, what else can he say? Like, you'll never be happy with an apology video. Jenna's, she played the videos at length she wanted to apologize for and then talked about them. Whereas he is like, I'm not going to delete anything. I'm going to talk about it, address it, apologize for it. It's not me. I'm not running from it. I'm not whatever. I'm donating. I'm whatever. You can do this in a good way. You can, like, I mean, we're already off to a good start with this. Again, I do not, I'm, I'm, I'm not necessarily, like, someone who will ever support him because I do not like the content that he's made. But he's not, like, you, do you remember Shane's video where he was, like, and if you choose not to support me, that's fine. I understand it. I haven't heard that from him yet. Maybe he will say it, and then I'll, you know, call him out for it. That's the best solution, at least for the time being. Say. And for anyone who liked those videos, I, I, you know, I want this video to be uh, an example and a lesson for you. You know, you can like content, but you can also think that it, it's irresponsible and it's hurting other people. Okay. So it just tap into that part of your brain that's saying like, oh, okay. It's like, it's probably not that important that this video stays online because truthfully, 
I've seen it. I've experienced the content, but it's done a lot of damage. We we can just let it. We can let it go. I'm sorry to everyone that I made content cop videos on. I I still don't like the majority of you, and that's fine. <coughs> but I can recognize that you did not deserve the hate and harassment that I sent your way. Uh, I particularly want to apologize to Tana. Oh. Tana, I'm sorry. I should have never made that video. Oh. I harassed Tana in person and then harassed her online. And that's deplorable behavior. It's so stupid. I'm also sorry to all the black viewers and minority groups who had to put up with that video and put up with, you know, the phrases. I, I said either it's all okay or none of it's okay. And that's just so dangerous and stupid. I have made content that I am proud of over the years. It hasn't been as consistent as maybe I'd like it to have been. But, you know, there is a lot of content that I think... I wonder if he tried to reach out privately to Tana. Um, yeah, on Twitter he said he messaged her. Had a net positive on the world. And, you know, I'm going to strive to continue on that trend. Uh, but again, I'm not... I'm, I'm absolutely going to continue to make mistakes. But I want the mistakes to be a lot smaller and a lot less serious. I also want to give some clarity to the post-fight speech that I gave. I mean, it wasn't a speech. It was a, a phrase. I was I like, no idea what you know, I'm not, I know I'm not everyone's cup of tea. <laughs> oh my God, he looks awful there. But, Ew. sorry, sorry. I mean, I guess he was just fighting, but like, wow, rough. Sorry. I, I really do uh, appreciate the support and, um, uh, you know, thank you for coming. That was addressing the people over the years that I neglected and I left behind. You know, the people whose feelings I, you know, didn't take into consideration. Those are the people who I was addressing as, I know I'm not everyone's cup of tea. Anyone who thinks that I should be shouting the N-word from the rooftops, I don't want to be your cup of tea. Now I want to talk about events and situations that have happened over the past five years of my life that have led me to the place I'm at now. One year I was at a convention and a bunch of fans were, you know, wanting pictures. And this particular fan came up to me and said, I know you probably don't like transgender people, but can I, you know, get a picture? That smell. Oh my god, that makes me want to cry. Oh my god, I'm like so, I'm like so sleep deprived that like that's literally gonna make me cry. That is so sad that someone would say that. Oh my god, I'm okay. Can we? Also be aware it's 5 a.m. So like, oh my god, that's gonna make me cry. That is so sad. Smacked me in the face. I was like, oh. Oh my god. That holy is so shit. Sad. Why would you think that? Oh my god. But I mean, it was fairly obvious. I was being cruel. Oh my god. Hateful, <laughs> bigoted, place. and uh, being very uncaring about people's feelings. That is a very fair so assessment sad. to make. I was giving this person bad vibes, and I think I've given a lot of people extremely bad vibes. Another event that was very important for me to experience was I went on a boxing podcast. I was basically like trying to walk back my uh, Tana content cop. Uh, you know, I was still very like insecure and uncomfortable with the fact that I made that video. And, uh, but I was still coping. You'll see me struggle in this clip. What the fuck does coping mean? I've heard so many people say this. What the actual fuck does coping mean? I hear it all the time. Dealing. To, dealing with. you know, say that it was wrong. So I just wanted to uh, let you talk on that, right? Because obviously uh, using the N-word is definitely frowned upon by a lot of people, April, especially by a non-African American, but I was just curious. That was a very weird video because i wanted to like criticize her for her like sort of flagrant use of it i've been pretty flagrant about it too not in the same way mm -hmm. um and uh i i thought there was a message to be to be shared there and um i don't think it was particularly it was okay in criticizing her but i think it like i probably wasn't the person to deliver the message if that and, makes sense and, and there was a, a message that i was trying to put out there 
and like i'm not really the person to put it Whatever his point is, I think it's interesting, again, that we're seeing this, like, successful mode of, like, an apology video where you're showing the videos you're talking about rather than talking about them. I think it's really important to, like, show things, then talk about them rather than, like, paraphrase them. About that message. I don't regret making the video. I think, you know, there's there's uh, bits and pieces to take from it that I think are valuable. Uh, but, you know, I probably wouldn't make it these days. I'm very grateful to those guys and how they uh, broached the subject because, you know, it didn't put me on the defensive. It just made me realize, like, I'm stupid. I'm stupid and I really need to, like, acknowledge these things. Like, like what am I doing? I'm still trying to make excuses for myself and, like, you know, why I made that video. It's like it was a dumb idea. I harassed someone. I was saying slurs and I was trying to justify it all. A very big thing that has sort of altered my view on all of this is just the amount of hate and harassment my wife Anissa has received over the years. Uh, she's had to deal with it from the beginning of our relationship, and I have done a horrible job at acknowledging her and her feelings for it. I, a lot of the time I just thought that that was, that was her problem or that was, um, you know, other people's problem. like. It's not my problem that you're getting hate and harassment. And it's like, no, it absolutely is. You know, that's the culture that I cultivated. And I, you know, didn't do anything to change that. You know, over... I think that's such a important, like, phrase. Like, the culture you, like, cultivated. Over the years, it's changed a little bit. But, I, you know, I, I don't think I've still fully uh, acknowledged how how responsible I am for the amount of harassment that Anissa has had to deal with. And this year oh, I nice decided thing. to speak more candidly and, and be more open about who I am as a person and to speak on my life a little bit more. And I did that on Anthony Padilla's podcast. These are the people that I'm attracting. These are the people that I'm entertaining. Mm. Like, I need to reevaluate things. They're relating and enjoying this content for a reason. And that's not maybe the same reason that I'm trying to make. I had a very wild west mentality when it came to online uh, mm -hmm. behavior. Like people are gonna do what they wanna do. People are gonna say what they wanna say. Um, and I can pretty much do the same uh, cause it's the internet. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you have to be a lot more responsible. If you guys are at all interested in how I've arrived here, that video gives you know a good bit of context and talks about some of my life a little bit. There is a clip from this interview. If people want to watch that, by the way, we can also watch that. The Anthony Padilla podcast, I guess. You that's been floating around the internet. And it's me calling my fans antisocial and basement dwellers. And I was like, I didn't like, you know, interacting with my fans. I just want to be clear, like, I, that was my realization. I think a lot of people... Wow, he's addressing everything in this. ...were like, of course that happened. is because you were creating that culture and you were attracting those people. And it's like... Yes, I know. I know now. I didn't know before. <laughs> it was my realization upon, you know, meeting more and more fans that I was like, oh, shit, you guys are, are struggling. It was easy for me to identify them struggling when they were outside of my body. But the antisocial basement dwelling incel that was inside here, uh, I, I couldn't acknowledge that. I couldn't recognize that. So I needed the mirror to be held up to me. In closing, I want to say that I have always thought that I was an empathetic person because I thought, well, I get angry, I get sad, of course I got empathy. Seems easy, right? Empathy? I definitely have that. There were moments where like a dog would die in a, in a film and I'd cry. So it's like, of course I have empathy. But I never did. Uh, I think only in these past couple of years have I gained the ability empathy. And it, I'm very ashamed to admit that. It sounds, it sounds really pathetic to say at the age of 32, I've acquired empathy. But I have, and I've realized it because I just, like, can't help myself but, uh, like, feel for other people's pain and suffering now. I'm still not perfect. I, you know, I, I think that is, uh, you know, my empathy meter's only maybe, like, a, a quarter of the way filled up potentially, but it's at least there. 
And uh, I just want you guys to know that uh, you can unlock ability empathy if you, you know, experience more life. It might take you getting hurt a little bit, but uh, it's worth it. It is so worth it. So thank you for watching, everyone. I do want to create more regular content. And, um, you know, I don't want to just have the next five videos be apologies. So I, I have uploaded a squirrel video on my second channel. If you want to watch... Not empath meter. <laughs> Stop. That. I guess there's one final thing. I just oh. want to thank everyone who's given me the space and the compassion to grow as a person. Because it's taken longer than it probably should have. I appreciate everyone. And I think most importantly, I appreciate my wife, Anissa. She has been insanely uh, compassionate and helpful and patient in uh, you know, allowing me to grow over the years and has, has legitimately encouraged me to be a better person and not a better person in just like the, you know, uh, I dubs becoming woke kind of way. She has, she was the one who said that I should try this boxing thing. I would have never done that on my own because I was insecure and I was pathetic. I did this and I am so glad I did. Uh, it's been amazing. So, Anissa, I love you. You're amazing. Right now you're streaming. Uh, but, bon voyage. Toodles. All right. Um, hmm, my thoughts. I think that this was, like, the, the perfect mold of what an apology video should be. There was no real controversy in the moment that he had to apologize for. He kind of stood up and did this himself, talking about things that people have been wanting him to talk about for years. It wasn't really, like, a pivotal, like, you know, something didn't happen yesterday where all of the clips didn't come out yesterday where he has to do this. So I always credit that. I do think it's important to note that in all of this, the content that he is referring to is content that affected minorities that aren't me. So I can't sit here and be like, Yes. Work. Slay. You ate. Like, I, I can't sit here and be like, I forgive you for, you know, your racist, you know, past. I can't forgive you for your ableist past. I can't forgive you for whatever. But what I can say is that this did seem very genuine. And I don't think I can ask for anything more in a in a YouTuber addressing things. I don't think I can. Um, I think this was... I think this was everything it could have been. And I think, uh, I think it was good. I think it was good. Again, I can't... I can't talk about, you know how I feel in a lot of things he's addressing because a lot of it did not affect me. You know what I mean? Um, but what I will say is I think that this is up there with Jenna Marble's video. I think so, yeah. I think that this is, like, up there with that mold of you can do an apology without having to, like, drag your audience into it and, like, blame your audience and, like, make your audience feel bad for you and stuff like that. Like, you can do an apology without having to guilt trip. You can do an apology without having to, like, divert the conversation. Um, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. And he's going on Tana's podcast. He's going on her podcast cancelled. They'll be talking about that. My, my thing I'm going to say to you is if people want to watch the Anthony Padilla podcast where he's talking about, like, how he got to this point, we can watch that as well. So comment down below if you want to see that. But, yeah. Anyways. <laughs>